The video you're about to watch is going to spoil most of IDW, so watch this if you've read it all, or you you just don't care. I don't blame you. Recently the Humble Bundle had a huge sale of Transformers comics, pretty much all of it for just £11. So of course I picked it up, I'd read more than meets the eye and lost light but not much else, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to finally dive into IDW. You gotta understand, when you're in this fandom for a while you start to hear these murmurs of opinions like that bit in Half-Life 1. An opinion that a lot of people in the fandom share is that IDW Shockwave is really cool. Like he's badass and stuff. So I was pretty excited to read Shockwave in the comics. Now, let me preface this by saying I bloody love Shockwave, right? G1 Shockwave is a lovable goof and he's amazing. Animated Shockwave is a conniving bastard and one of the highlights of the show. Bumblebee Shockwave looks like he could Xenia on the top you. Prime Shockwave... You get the point, I really like Shockwave. That being said, IDW Shockwave is really bad. I'm not one of those basement dwelling mongrels that are like, it's bad because it's different, no no. I'm just a regular basement dwelling mongrel that plays Monopoly with other basement dwelling mongrels. Doesn't fuck up, is it? Scrooge bought Trafalgar Square. Fred just bought the entirety of London. <laughs> <laughs> Of course I did. The only nice things I can say about him is that he at least looks like Shockwave and his backstory is cool, but he's just not written well, really. So Shockwave was once a senator on Cybertron who was nice and friends with Optimus Prime. Then he was lobotomized and became a bad boy. That's fine, I suppose. What doesn't work is how they follow up on it. Rather than have Optimus Prime come to terms with the fact that his friend is a bad guy over time, Optimus keeps saying to him over and over, Shockwave, please, I know you can be good. Or, I believe in you, Shockwave. Or, you used to make me sandwiches, Shockwave. Make more and be a good boy again. It's all we ever see. Even during Dark Cybertron, Optimus never seems that angry with Shockwave, even after everything he does. Shockwave isn't defeated at the end of Dark Cybertron by being outsmarted. He's defeated because Optimus Prime and Megatron gave him a slap on the wrist and said he's better than this. Can you imagine if during the lightsaber fight in A New Hope, Ben Kenobi tries to keep sweet-talking Darth Vader down instead of trying to fight him? It removes agency and it just makes him look like a little... shock flake. I am so sorry, I really wanted to slip that in somehow. So upon failing his plan in Dark Cybertron, Shockwave is apparently killed at the hands of Optimus Prime and Megatron. No, actually, the stars aligned and he was sent back in time. I swear it almost makes sense in context. So he takes this opportunity to take up the guise of Onyx Prime, or oinks, on, o uh, and he succeeds at doing this. No one seems to bat an eye that Onyx Prime went from being a innocent, carefree farmer boy to an imperialist. So get this right, Shockwave is smart. But, but he's just so smart that he literally remembers everything ever. That's not a joke, he's just that good. Oh, also, he was able to outsmart all of the Primes too, and, and he made these reality-breaking orbs too, there's like 14 of them, and he made all of them, and he's a wizard, he knows magic. He's just so good, you know? His one and only character flaw, that he has no emotions or whatever, isn't even a flaw because it only makes him stronger. Remember that thing from a minute ago where I said he becomes Onyx Prime? Eventually he gets caught. Does he get executed? Of course not. Like, there's no way he would have been able to plan that. How is he always able to get his way? It's not like he manipulates anyone, it's just the stupidity of everyone else. So as we've seen, he's smart, he's calculating, he does a lot of things, but we never see how he does anything. Like, this is just my interpretation, but he's fucking crazy. They're not trying to make him insane, they're trying to make him smart and stuff, but he's just bonkers and kind of dumb. Rather than show his cunning nature through subtlety or, you know, strategy, they just have him come up with these awful plans where he just gets a big baddie to fight the goodies. Like with the Necro Titan or the Ammonites. Is that how you say that? All because he wants to destroy the universe to save Cybertron, which is like the only thing that's ever on his mind 24-7. If he's so gosh darn smart, how is he fooled so easily? It's not like he doesn't understand emotions, he's just not capable of feeling them. 
The common argument for Shockwave in IDW is that he's so cool. He's badass, so who cares? But Shockwave crosses a line where he just stops being badass and instead becomes a boring, inconsistent power fantasy that single-handedly manages to remove any and all tension a story featuring him could have had. It's weird to me that Shockwave gets a free pass, while a character like Windblade gets shunned and called a Mary Sue by the fanbase. Windblade makes mistakes, she develops, she grows over the course of the story. Shockwave wishes he was Windblade. That's something no one has ever said before. That's all I have to say on the subject matter. Um, video's over. Uh. Oh wait, no, there is one more.